question about what you said about we have to be able to prove to the governor, to the state, that um, we could accommodate a surge. So do we have to keep a certain percentage of our beds empty? No. No, okay. No, we, we, we just said, well, number one, you have to demonstrate that you've got enough personal protective equipment, masks, gowns, gloves, things of that nature, um, to um, support your operations for some period of time. And we're, we're actually increasingly in better and better shape. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, we're now giving you know, a brand new surgical mask every single day uh, to all of our employees at Wanham. And uh, you know, our, our staff that are taking care of uh, COVID patients, brand new N95 masks every day, no you reuse. Mm -hmm. so, um, so that's been uh, a very positive. Uh, we're still struggling with isolation gowns. Um, those still seem to be um, scarce. Uh, lots of uh, unfilled orders. So you've got to be able to demonstrate that you've got the PPE, that you have the staffing to be able to cover it, and that you do have the ability uh, to vacate beds. So you have the ability to, again, stop those elective surgeries to open beds back up. You have to demonstrate that you've got alternative care sites, which we do. So our 61-bed our rehab hospital out on our west campus we have beds available still in our skilled nursing facility, um, beds available uh, at the mental health hospital, although that would be probably a little bit more difficult. Um, but I think, you know, right now at 27 patients, uh, we're managing um, just fine. Um, but we've, you know, we might find our, our pediatric unit, mm -hmm. the 12-bed unit, is still closed. We are still providing pediatric care, but we're doing that in the mother-baby unit. Um, the previous NICU, which housed 15 uh, neonates, that's all now moved up to the brand new sixth floor of the Asequi wing. Mm -hmm. So that space is open. Um, so we could quickly turn the 12-bed peds unit and that former NICU space, that could be immediately converted okay. um, to, uh, to COVID care. So um, I think we have that ability to, to demonstrate to the state. But they're, they're not saying that you have to have a minimum surge capacity at all times. Okay. So when we talk about elective surgeries, you mentioned the planning process, the team that's been meeting. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of planning that has gone into this. And oh, yes. I know that two of our VPs are just, that's what they're dedicated to right now. Um, we want to make sure that our community knows that it's safe to come in. So a lot of extra measures have been taken to make sure that our we're ready to go and um, it's a safe environment. Yes. Well, in fact, um, this might fall into that category of what I'm saying today could change tomorrow. But um, so, you know, in terms of testing, um, so the new patients that are coming in for elective surgery, um, some hospitals have decided they're only just going to screen them, you know, temperature, ask them the questions, are you exhibiting any symptoms? And if they are negative to all of that, they go ahead and do the surgery. Others are performing a PCR molecular COVID um, test, the nasal pharyngeal swab on every single one of them, and then running it you know, on their analyzer to see if they're positive or negative for COVID. So as of right now, our plan is we will test every single one of those surgical patients. And we'll do it either you know, within 24 or 48 hours of their surgery. We'll work with them to tell them, here's how you now need to quarantine yourself so that you don't expose yourself between you now having the test and the day of your surgery. Uh, any patient that tests positive for COVID just prior to their surgery most likely would have their, post their surgery postponed. Um, there may be rare exceptions where the surgeon still says, no, I think we need to do this. And in that case, we'll don all the PPE mm -hmm. that's required to keep both our patient and our staff safe. Um, but the plan is not only will we do those screenings, like I, I mentioned, but we will also test uh, for the presence of the virus. Um, but that's all contingent on the ongoing availability um, of the testing yeah. material. Right. So. Right.